So people who were gaming around the mid-2000s probably remember the orange box, and what made it truly so good was the amount of value that you got out of it. Not only did you get Half-Life 2 and its ensuing episodic content, but it was the first time that gamers got their hands on Team Fortress 2, and more importantly, Portal. Team Fortress 2 has long gone on to become free to play and developed a vast, rich community of serious gamers and idiotic man-children. I could probably talk about how much that game has changed until I bleed from my asshole, but I won't. Instead, I'd prefer to talk about Portal. A unique puzzle game set in a first-person perspective that still holds up almost 10 years after its original release. The story goes that an indie dev team called Nuclear Monkey Software were working on a game called Narbacula Drop with similar gameplay before the team was snatched up by Valve Software and started working on Portal, which was eventually released for the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and Microsoft Windows in 2007. Fantastic. So if you break Portal down to its most basic attributes, it's a puzzle game where you've got a gun that shoots two types of portals, a blue and an orange one. You shoot the blue one onto one surface and the orange one onto another, and they make a doorway in between. It sounds simple on the surface, but then you consider the physics depending on the placement of each portal and the directions you're entering and exiting them, then the environmental hazards and puzzles that you've also got to solve, and the fact that not every surface can conduct a portal. I've often hurt my head just trying to think how they'd go about coding all of this stuff, let alone designing it and making the entire thing cohesive and fun to play. The story is basic in the sense that there's not all that much exposition, but like Half-Life 1 and 2, the way it's told is what's most engaging. You're told very little about your character. We later find out you're a woman named Chell, taking part in the Aperture Science Laboratory's Enrichment Center. So anyway, from the start of the game, you're basically thrown right into puzzles like some kind of guinea pig as a passive-aggressive AI program named GLaDOS guides your every move. Very good. You are now in possession of the Aperture Science handheld portal device. Once you're given the ability to fire both portals with the portal gun, the game becomes suitably challenging with puzzles requiring reflexes and a basic understanding of the physics of your character. You'll have to use portals at opposite heights to launch yourself across large gaps, and later in the game you'll also have to avoid gun turrets and complete some timed sequences that really come down to the wire. Well done. Chell wears these sort of spring-looking things on her feet, which means you can drop from any surface without suffering from fall damage, but you can still die from falling into large pools of murky-looking water, which I guess is supposed to be acid or something, as well as the many self-aware gun turrets you encounter later in the game. Portal runs on the Source engine, used pretty much in every single Valve game at the time, and it's not really a visual powerhouse in any sense of the word, but what it does is effective and well-optimized. The texture work is basic and simplistic when it needs to be, and gritty, metallic and dirty when you're moving through the inner workings of the facility. There's really nothing worth complaining about in terms of the level design, and all of the puzzles are pretty easy to complete once you figure out what it is you're supposed to be doing. There's certain limitations on some puzzles, like this sort of field that will dissolve your portals when you walk through it, which requires thinking outside of the proverbial box. Where the game really shines though is towards the end when you've escaped the testing area for reasons I won't divulge, where you're moving through environments you weren't supposed to be seen. These areas show off the most creativity because they genuinely feel like you've escaped the system and the way you improvise with the portal gun to get where you need to go shows off masterful level design. Another big thing that's always impressed me about this game is the way it tells its story. Now, even though from the get-go things seem quite eerie, it's not about until halfway through the game when you start to see the hints that something sinister is going on behind the scenes that we're not quite aware of. Despite there being frequent observation booths in all of the many puzzles, you'll notice that they're all empty without another person being seen the whole time. I mean, it's creepy stuff. The end twist is a little bit obvious, but the way it's been handled is perfect, and you just slowly see this world around you falling apart as you finally uncover what's really going on. It's that very subtle form of storytelling that the Half-Life games have always had down to a fine art. The only downside to Portal is that it spawned in legions of people who like to blurt out lame cake jokes in between watching reruns of The Big Bang Theory. But to be fair, there's not really anything all that wrong with this game on the whole. In all honesty, I could probably talk about Portal for an entire video, but there's really not much else to it. It'll take the better part of two hours to get through, maybe less if you're a smart sunny gym and can figure out the test chambers quickly. Very, very good. A complimentary victory lift has been activated in the main chamber. During the ending, which I won't spoil, it does set up things for the sequel, which lo and behold we got in 2011. Now Portal 2 is I think the far superior game because it takes what little story there was in the first game and really develops it a lot more. Almost there! Remember, you're looking for a gun that makes holes! 
Not bullet holes. But don't worry, you'll figure it out. Seriously, do hold on this time. Following on from the events in the first game, you awaken to again find yourself inside the Aperture Science Enrichment Center. God, that's a mouthful. After an indiscriminate amount of time has passed and the entire facility is run down and falling apart. After being woken up by an overly chatty robot named Wheatley, voiced by Stephen Merchant, you're back in control and off together to escape the facility before GLaDOS is woken up and you're thrown into the depths of the testing chambers once again. At this point, you complete a whopping 22 different test chambers before things take another nosedive, and the older areas of the facility are accessed, and it's during these moments that the game explores the history of Aperture Science, going back as far as the 1970s. Without spoiling too much, at one point you'll set foot in some of the earliest laboratories the company ever built, which happen to be narrated by Aperture Science CEO, Cabe Johnson, voiced by J.K. Simmons. These show off some experimental test chambers of what the company called enrichment spheres at the time. Summer Cave Johnson's dialogue is really hilarious, and as you move through all of these labs, which sort of acts as a timeline for the company, his narration becomes more and more unhinged as it hints at how slowly he went bankrupt throughout the years. Great job, astronaut, war hero, and or Olympian. With your help, we're gonna take him out. It's great in the sense that the narrative and the story never takes you out of the moment, and you're still learning new things about the characters without ever having to stop playing the actual game. But even outside of the main plot elements, every facet of the game has this wicked sense of humour. Down to something as simple as a sign on the wall, showing how the neurotoxin lab is located right next door to the daycare centre. Oh no... Yes, hello, no, we're not stopping. Don't make eye contact, whatever you do. No, thanks, we're good. Appreciate it. Portal 2 looks significantly better than the first game, the attention to detail in some of the early areas, where all of the various flora has begun seeping into the facility, as well as some of the physics during certain scripted sequences, just looks awesome. The lighting is also top notch, there's a section where you're moving through a pitch black area with Wheatley as your light source, and it just looks brilliant. Even the scale and size of the maps and the testing chambers is easily upwards of double or even triple what it was in the first game. Oh baby, a triple. The soundtrack is great to listen to, there's a few sections where it reacts dynamically to what you're doing which is a neat touch. The music that you get during the credits at the end of both games is also really, really catchy. Across both games, the lady doing GLaDOS just pulls off this subtly amazing performance. She's sarcastic, passive-aggressive, and flat-out threatening, among many others. For someone replicating what is basically an AI system, she just nails all of these different emotions. And I've got to give props to my boy J.K. Simmons, too. He does a bang-up job with the voice acting. The lab boys just informed me that I should not have mentioned the control group. They're telling me I ought to stop making these pre-recorded messages. That gave me an idea. Make more pre-recorded messages. I pay the bills here, I can talk about the control group all damn day. Overall, the game world just feels, looks, and sounds exactly like what you'd expect for a place that's been deserted for a couple hundred years and just left to wither away. Portal 2 doesn't rest on its laurels, though. It adds a whole heap of new mechanics into the various testing chambers. For instance, now there's directional lasers which you can redirect using a special kind of cube. Later in the game, you'll have to use three types of gel. There's a propulsion gel, which speeds up your movement, a repulsion gel, which bounces you high into the air, and a third gel, which you can create portals on. Some of these puzzles, where you're required to use all three gels to succeed, are really well designed, and the game is full of these little aha moments, where you finally figure out the solution, usually after you've spent like five or so minutes thumping your head on the table because you felt like an idiot. Probably my favourite addition is the co-op mode, which is pretty much as it sounds. This is where you're playing with another person and taking on a whole different set of test chambers, each player having their own portal gun, allowing up to four portals at once. The fuck my garbage. Anyway, there we go. Cool guys. Again, I can't begin to wrap my head around the thought of how they were able to come up with some of the chambers in this mode. They're just so enjoyable and well put together. The only kind of downside to this mode is that you really need to play with someone you know, or at least have a microphone plugged in, as you're going to need to be talking to your partner constantly to complete some of the tougher chambers. The co-op mode has a decent length to it, it's probably about as long as the first Portal game, so anywhere from 2 hours and up, and the Portal 2 campaign itself is easily 3 or 4 times longer than the first game too. All up, that's damn good value considering how cheap the game is nowadays. I wouldn't say that the Portal series is a must-play, but it's definitely polished and practically glitch and bug-free, which for a first-person puzzle game involving portals and physics is pretty damn astounding. 
I would think that most people who are remotely into first person games have played and finished both of these by now, but if you're one of the select few who hasn't, it's definitely worth checking out. It's not the most hardcore puzzle game out there, but it's funny, it's engaging, it's well written, and it looks and sounds pretty good. Or maybe your prejudiced work site should have accommodated a nanobot of my size. Thanks for the hate crime, Jer. See you in court, mate. Anyway. When it's all over, I had this genuine feeling of sadness, like I was saying goodbye to a bunch of friends. I mean, it's really that fun to play at times. And if nothing more, it'll give you something to do while we wait for Half-Life 3. That was a joke. Ha ha, fat chance.